hope you're doing well and welcome back to another video. Um, in today's video I'm going to be doing a little review of this book I just read, Maurice, by a Ian Forrester um, and also a little review of the film adaptation that came out in 1987 I believe. Um, so yeah first of all let's start with the book um i finished this yesterday and oh my god i absolutely love this so much i basically read it in like nearly two ish sittings i don't know um i started it at like 11 p.m the previous night and then i read till about like 3 a.m and then i went to sleep and then and then i woke up like i did some stuff and then i basically read from like 1 p.m till like five or six when I finished it um so yeah and I I loved it um I also listened to the audiobook whilst I was reading along um the audiobook I got through Borrow Box um through like my local library um and it was narrated by Ben Whishaw which unbeknownst like I didn't really make the connection at first because I just picked up this bookmark because I wanted to use this bookmark but I was using this bookmark whilst I was reading this book and it is my Paddington one and who does the voice for Paddington none other than Ben Whishaw um so that was a cute little coincidence but yeah I really really loved the narration by him he just he suits like an Edwardian era gay man for some reason I don't know why um but I just I really enjoyed it um and when I read classics I do quite like to listen as well as read I just feel like I get the most out of it that way um but that being said this isn't like a, a very difficult classic to read um it's not like it's not really that like jargon based or like the language and things um so I probably could have just read it as it is, but I just, I feel like I enjoyed it more. But if you only do want to listen to it audibly, I would recommend that audiobook in particular, but I'm guessing other ones are good as well. Uh, but yeah, what is this book about? Um, I think you should go into this mostly blind if you don't know the story, because you're going to get the best reading experience out of it. But like the general theme is that it's about uh like a sort of like a middle class upper east class um man maurice maurice hall um and we follow him from about like age 14 to like 24 ish sort of and it sort of jumps um and he comes into himself um and he learns like who he is and everything and also he has two um relationships with two men um the first is cambridge equal um clive durham and then later the like working class gamekeeper alec scudder scudder <laughs> he's so sweet um and yeah that's all i'm gonna say about that plot obviously there's a lot of other things that do happen but like i said I don't want to spoil too much about it but yeah that's what it's about um and yeah this was written in like 1913 1914 but there's something about it that I can't really place my finger on or like when I think about it I can't exactly say why but it has a it has an element of modernity and an element of like a contemporariness to it and it just reads like something that could have been written like 20 years ago or even less um the references and some of the writing no they are a little bit dated like pianoforte and different things like that um but I think it's possibly to do with like the tone or just the general story arc or something. I'm not sure, but there's something about it that just that just gave me a very modern feeling. It's something I really, really enjoyed. Um, as I was saying, this is a classic that is very, very accessible. Um, it's it just it flows well and um, it's not that complicated. It's not that like big words and everything like I feel like it is um 
quite an easy route into getting into classics. That being said, I have not read many <laughs> at all, in all honesty. I've read a few, but not that, like, much. What I love, I think, so much about this is that Forrester writes these characters with their good points, but he also includes as their flaws. And he makes them very, very real. And, like, I can picture them in the flesh. Like, they are, like, real people to me. Um, and I think this is just done so well. And I really, really enjoyed that. Um, there is literally nothing in this book I didn't like. The only thing that I, like, might criticism it on was that it wasn't longer. Like, this is a type of book that with this writing and the characters and the, like just how things was happening i could have read like a 500 page version of this instead of a 230 page um but that being said the conciseness and like the parts of it i guess would have been impacted if it was longer but I, I, it's just a testament to say how much i really enjoyed it that i would have read uh, like a three times the length version of this story now, I'm going to just quickly flash a little spoiler warning. I'll put it in the timestamp below. So if you don't want to hear a spoiler about this book, don't carry on watching. Skip to the bit where I talk about the film. Um, but I'm going to start talking about spoiler now. My favourite, favourite part of this book is the ending. I absolutely adored it. Um, I think that the part where... Ah, uh, where Alec and Morris go off into the Greenwood, um, and the, they have a happy ending. They they have a happy ending, and I think that is just so incredible. Um, it was written in like the early nineteen hundreds. There wasn't much queer literature at all, but what there was was demonising queer people. It had queer characters that died at the end. They, they killed themselves. They was killed or they just died naturally. There was very, very little that actually had a happy ending for their queer characters. And the fact that the Forrester chose to do this, I just I just thought it was so good. And I, I didn't like know that going in. So it was just a really good um, thing to like, see um it's a type of book that that you can't really you can't really say how the how it is going to end as it's going along because there is different things how they fit together um but the way it all did in the end i think was just done so amazingly um and then there's a little quote here that i thought i'd just read out this is from the author's terminal note i read this after obviously because it's the tone note but then i also read the introduction by david levitt um in this penguin classics edition that i felt was that was such a such an interesting read and i would so recommend it but read it after the book because it does contain spoilers but this bit i really loved um so this is what forrester wrote um after finishing the book um in 1960 this was by the way um a happy ending was imperative i shouldn't have bothered to write otherwise i was determined that in fiction anyway two men should fall in love and remain in it for the ever and ever that fiction allows and in this sense morris and alec still roam the green words there, isn't that so adorable? I love that so much. And in a way, it sort of has changed the way I view the ending because at first I would have I would have wanted that epilogue. I wanted to know what happened. I wanted to see it. But he prevents us from that and he makes sure that they live on and their love lives on in the fiction because not only are they separated from Clive's gaze you know, from his estate and they're separated from the British society at the time that was unwilling to accept a happy ending for a gay couple but also the readers are like there's a barrier between the readers and the characters now um because they've left us um and you're just left to your imagination of what what happened to them well how do they how do they continue their, their story and their lives and i just i feel like it's just so amazing and it's, it's really changed the way i viewed the ending and it just made me love it so much more 
so yeah i really really enjoyed that um yeah and if this had been published when it was written in like 1914 i feel like a lot of queer literature to follow would have been impacted and there would have been a lot more pleasanter stories um i guess up until like the 80s and 90s when um the age crisis impacted so much of queer culture and and evidently queer literature um but i feel like before then there would have been a lot more better if it had done but obviously we can't we can't make predictions of what would have happened um but yeah i know um, that's what i'm going to say about the book i 100 percent recommend this has become one of my favorites i really 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 enjoyed this a full five stars it's become one of my like j'adore books my like my top tier of five star books um and yeah i'd so so recommend it um now the the film adaptation which i just put a little picture there um i really enjoyed this i watched that like after finishing the book um i enjoyed it I thought it was very good. Um, it wasn't my favourite film. Um, I yeah, I def I preferred the book to the film. Um, I think I didn't like the fact that Morris was played by a blonde actor because there was quite a few references in the book to him having dark hair and black hair, um, and um, the, in in the the introduction by David Levitt and um, he says something about how um, it doesn't like really like stay true to the character and some other things about the film that doesn't um, reign true which I sort of saw um, I would still really recommend the film I did enjoy it um, but I don't know if I would watch it again I'm not sure I'm definitely gonna read the book again um, but yeah, I guess that, is that a review of the film? Not really. I don't really know what else to say about it. Um, I think it's a very good adaptation. It stays very, very true to the book. Um, like basically all the main, all like the main scenes are in it. Some aren't. Um, and I think it does quite a good job of um, the, the, like the trial scene with Risley and, um, and um, when Clive sort of sees. And so I think that, it sort of has like an alternative reasoning for his for his change of mind in a sense um that um i sort of had a bit of a questions about um when i was reading and i feel like that was quite a good addition i i would say um but overall it reigns true and i would recommend it um i would still say to read the book over the film and to read the book first because um the film would spoil the book for you um but both are great and i really would recommend them so i hope you enjoy this video um and i shall see you very soon have a nice morning evening night wherever you are in the world bye